Hey guys, today you join me for episode 2 of Learn to Code with Kerbal Space Program, the series in which I try to teach you some Python and how you can use that to fly rockets around in Kerbal Space Program. Now, last episode we just kind of did the setup and then wrote some code that pretty much just hit the stage button and we watched a rocket go to space. Which, you know, technically we wrote some code that sent a rocket to space, but today we're going to do something a little cooler. We're going to learn how to actually control a rocket, fly it around, do some cool stuff. Um, but to do that, we're going to have to learn a few things about Python. Right, yeah, you got to learn before you have fun, yeah. But <laughs> it will be good, and uh, we're going to learn some important things today. We're going to learn about variables and conditional statements, and a few other little things we're going to touch on just because we need them for flying things around. Um, so yeah, let's just jump right into it with variables. What are variables? Well, they're how we store things in Kerbal, in Kerbal Space Program. Uh, they're how we store things in Python, and the way you do that is you give it a name and a value. So let's make a variable called a, and give it a value of 1. Now that's a uh, variable with an integer value of 1. We can also have uh, values that aren't integers with uh, decimal places and everything else. So we can have b is equal to 1.5. Um, this is called a floating point variable. Uh, it's kind of because this point floats around. Um, it's a little more complicated than that, but when you display this in binary, the point moves, basically. Um, it's a little more complicated than that, but maybe I'll do a video on that one day, because it is quite interesting, but it's a little out of the scope of this video. And we can also have things like strings. Um, last time we did a print statement where we printed, um, hello world, like this. Uh, and that right there, that's a variable. Um, well, it's a value at least. Um, and this can be assigned to a variable, uh, like this c is equal to hello world. This is called a string, which is a string of characters making up some text. We can also have um, some true or false variables. We could have uh, something called d, uh, give it a value of true or a value of false. And uh, yeah, those are all very useful. Those are like the kind of four really important variable types we're going to look at today. Um, and uh, yeah, there will be more as we'll get onto it. Uh, you may remember from last episode, we did something like this. Vessel is equal to uh, no, 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 we did a uh, connection is equal to um, krpc.connect, like this. And that is a variable with a value of whatever is returned from this function right here. Now, again, that's a little out of the scope of this video, but you can see that um, a, a, a variable can be almost anything, and you can build your own types of variables. It's a little more complicated than that, and we'll get onto it at, an, at another time. But for now, let's just uh, focus on these basic types. They're called types, strings, floats, um, uh, integers, uh, Boolean variables. So a true-false variable is called a Boolean. It's named for the uh, mathematician, I think, James Boole, uh, who came up with what's called a Boolean logic. And we're going to use a bit of that today, which involves Booleans. Um, uh, but that'll be explained later. And you can do things with these variables. These, thing, uh, these variables can store things. So instead of printing hello world, we could just print C, run that, and it'll print hello world in our terminal. Well, our, our shell right here. We'd also print A, and that'll print uh, the value of what? That'll print 1. And what that's actually doing is turning this um, into a string like this with just the value 1. So it's basically actually printing this. Um, but that's just something this print function does. We'd also print uh, also print D, and that'll print false. Um, again, that's turning it into a string. Now, um, we can also add things together. We can perform operations on these. And we do that with something called or with something called operators. And we've already used an operator right here. This is the equal sign, which is an operator. It's an assignment operator. It assigns this value to this variable. Um, and what we could do is have something called e, perhaps, which is equal to a plus d, using the addition operator. And if we were to print that, as you would probably expect, this will equal 2.5. But I thought you said that a was equal, was an integer. That's not an integer. Um, uh, how does how how is it now a, a floating point variable? Well, py, uh, well, Python just kind of figures all of this out. In some languages, um, you were you, in most languages, you have to actually define the type of the variable. I would have to say int a. Ooh, nice uh, int a is equal to one, or say float b is equal to one point five. And then if I were to say 
um, int e is equal to a plus b, that wouldn't work because that would uh, give us something that isn't an integer. But in Python, it just handles it all for you. So you can do things like this. You can just do a plus b and it doesn't really matter. You can just think of these as numbers more than the specific types of numbers. Now, what you can't really do is say a plus c. That's going to give you a problem. It's going to give you an error because what does that mean, a plus? A well, 1 plus hello world? That doesn't make any sense. We can maybe do 1 plus d, though. If we run that, what happens there? It's equal to 1. That's interesting. This isn't equal to anything. Well, what if we change this to true? What would happen then? We'd get 2. Because you may know in, in uh, computing we use something called binary with a 1 that is on or off or true or false. So really, uh, true and false are actually just kind of equal to 1 and 2. Um, so yeah, that's a little extra fun thing. But yeah, we can also do uh, things like um, we can do more than just add things together. We can take things away from each other. So we can do uh, 1.5 minus 1 like that. Uh, we can multiply things together. Um, let's change this to something slightly more interesting. So 2 times 1.5 is 3, of course. We can divide things. 2 divided by 1.5 is 0.75. Um, we could square this. B to the power of... So let's say we wanted to square A. A to the power of 2. That's what that does. And this is another operator. And that'll give us 4. And what we can do is assign A to A plus B. We can do that. That just gives A this new... What are, oh yeah, <laughs> that doesn't exist anymore. Um, we can do A is equal to A plus B. Now I know I'm covering a lot of ground right now, but I'm just trying to give you an overview of this. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to link all the resources I use in the... Well, all, a bunch of helpful resources in the description, including just a table of all the operators and what they do. So you can really study it if you want. But I'm just trying to go through it and show you what you can do. Um, so of course, now if we were to print A, uh, A is now equal to uh, 3.5. B is still equal to 1.5. But yeah, you can... Um, you can add something to itself, basically. Or you could even do a a is equal to a plus a, um, like so. And maybe you didn't want to write all of this. Maybe you just want to add b to a, but you want to do it a little quicker. You can use this operator, a plus equals operator. That's just a little shortcut, basically, which is basically saying a is equal to a plus b, but you can just say plus equals b. Um, you can do the same with minus, by the way. Um, and multiply, and everything else. Uh, you can do this. Um, a is equal to A times B. Um, yeah, and those are the basic operators for this kind of thing. So we've got plus, um, we've got addition, uh, subtraction, multiplication, division, um, exponent, plus equals, minus equals, times equals, which is this, just A is equal to A times B. Um, so yeah, I, again, I'll link all of that in the, I'll, in the description. Um, I will be using this a lot today and in the future. So if you're like, what's happening right now? We're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna use this a lot, and you're gonna get used to this a lot more. I just, I just wanted to cover all of this. What you can do with variables. Something else you can do. An operator I missed. I've realized is a modulus operator. It's a modulus operator. Well, it gives you the remainder of something divided by something else. So let's say we had twenty-five. And we want to divide. Tw we want to see what twenty for what the remainder of twenty-five divided by four was. We could do this and see what the remainder is. Now the remainder is just one because, of course, you can go um, uh, four times six is twenty-four, uh, giving us a remainder of one. If I were to do three, we'd get a different value. One again because numbers, I guess. Um, <laughs> yeah, actually, most of them are going to be one. Let's say seven. Um, a to the, this should give us four if I'm not stupid. Yay, there we go. That just gives you the remainder. So yeah, that's variables and operators. A brief whistle stop tour, but the best way to learn this is to do things with it. And we will be doing that today and in the future. And just a quick note uh, before we move on about like naming variables. Um, so you can name them basically anything you want, but they do have to start with letters. And they can only uh, really include letters, numbers, and underscores. Um, there may be some other things they can contain, but I think those are the three. And I don't believe they can start with numbers in Python. I'm fairly sure that's true in Python. It is in most program programming languages. Um, so yeah, uh, just bear that in mind when naming your variables. Um, the other thing we're covering today is if statements. Uh, conditional statements, I should say, and you probably may have heard that of that as if statements. Um, so basically, what this is is something. Let's just let's just write one. So let's get uh, let's just say if one is equal to one. Um, print uh, 
Yeah, just print one is e one is equal to one. Um, so basically, what this is doing, as you can see, it's just printing that. It's after the if statement. It evaluates whether or not this is true or not. And if it is, it does what's in here. And if not, it moves on. So say we had a variable, a boolean variable. Um, a is equal to true. Um, and we said if a print one is equal to one. Um, if we say a is equal to false, it's not going to print that. And what was this one equals one thing though? That's another operator basically. This is a boolean operator. It's checking if one is equal to one. Now obviously this is the assignment operator, so if we were to do this we'd be trying to assign one to one, and that doesn't return true or anything. But basically this returns a value of true or false. So if I were to say if one is equal to two, it won't print that, because that's false. Um, so basically an if statement just, whatever you put after the if statement, it checks if it's true. If it's true, it does what's in the, um, does what's below it here. If it's false, it doesn't. Um, so, uh, why is this indented? Why is this, why is this here? Why isn't it like this? What if I did this? It's going to give you an error because indentation is really important in, um, in Python. It tells you what code is where. So, if a is equal to, uh, so if a print, um, one is equal to one. If I were to type something else after this, just like a bunch of exclamation marks, um, that's not right, uh, like this, and run that code, it'll just print this, because this isn't in the if statement. If I were to do this and write true, it would print all of that, because that's within the statement. But out, what if I do this? It's outside of this statement, if that makes sense. All right, so, oh, and I should say, um, what this is really doing, I'm saying if a, because a is true, because this is the base, basically the same as doing this. If the value in there is true, if the value is true, um, and that'll print that as well. Um, so this is the same as doing this, basically. If a is equal to true, then it'll do that. But we can just shorten that to if a. Um, and something else we can do, uh, but I'll cover these operators in a couple of minutes after I've described some other things. So what if we want to do something else if a is not true? Well, we just simply write underneath here, else colon, and then write some code here. Print false, perhaps. And that's actually just printing the value of false, which is basically doing the same as if we put it in quotes. So th these do the same thing, because when you print a value that isn't a string, it turns it into a string, basically, like this. So anyway, uh, yeah, if I were to print that, it would print a is equal, it, it would print true, because a is true, if I were to do this. A is not true, so if a isn't true, else, print something else, print false. But what if you wanted, if you had two variables, say? You said b is equal to true, and you would say if you want to say um, if a is true, then print a true. If uh, else if I want to print b is true, well then we just type else if. Well, actually we type l if, which is a shortening of else if. L if um, l if b. Then underneath here we can print b true, like this. I have missed a quotation mark right there, and if I were to run this, it'll print B true. And if this were false, it'll print false, because neither of these are true. If A is true, it's not. If Okay, then else. If B is true, it's not. Well, then just else print false. What if both of these were true? What would it do then? Well, if both of these are true, it's just going to print A true. Because if A is true, print A. Else, oh well, then don't do that because a because the first thing was right. So don't bother with else and don't bother with this else else either. Um, if after this instead I was to write if again, if a is true, if b is true, then it's going to print both of them because it's not doing an else. And these are totally separate statements. Um, uh, so if if a see the totally separate if statements, um, this doesn't depend on this basically. But if I were to type l if. Um, it has to come after an if statement. If I were to do this, it would make no sense. Else what? Else, else what? So yeah, that's uh, basically how if, else, if, and if statements, uh, if, else, if, and else statements works. And you can chain these as much as you want. You can have another L, else, if, else, if, um, uh, two is equal to two. Print, um, print, uh, two. Yeah, just print that. And if uh, both of these were false now, 
it'll print that. And now, you can only have one if statement in this, because obviously, um, because if you start another if statement, then the, then if I were to say, again, if A, blah, 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 then this runs, and then this is a whole new if statement, and then these else ifs depend on this, and this else depends on this, and they don't care about this, basically. Um, and if I hit else, then that's obviously the end, because that's, if nothing above is true, then just do this. Um, so I can't have like an else if after that because it would just make no sense. And yeah, that's basically if statements. Um, that's the, the structure of them. Again, we're going to use this a lot and it's going to become more clear as we use it more. Um, but yeah, so what was that earlier? What was if, what was, what, what's all this if one is equal to one stuff? Well, that's more operators. These aren't assignment or addition operators. These are Boolean operators. They carry out Boolean operations. All the kind of things that guy James Boole worked out, like I mentioned earlier. So there's a few operators. So let's um, get ourselves a couple of new variables. A is equal to one, B is equal to two. And let's just get that all lined up. Um, so, if A is equal to B, <laughs> if 1 is equal to B, if A is equal to B, print true, like so. Run that, so you have to put a colon at the end of your if statement, otherwise it won't know what's happening. Then you run that, and um, it's not going to print true, it's going to print something else. I'll put an else statement down there just for clarity. Um, print false, like that. So if A is equal to B, print true, else print false. And if I were to change this to one, then of course it would print true. There's also something that checks if they're not equal. So if A does not equal B, and that's denoted with um, exclamation mark equals. So this will print true because one does not equal two. And if this were to one, one does equal two. So this evaluates to false. So it prints false down here in our little shell. Um, so yeah, that's basically what that does. There's also uh, some more operators. There's greater than, uh, for example. So if A is greater than B, which it is now, it'll print true. If it's smaller than B, it'll print false. So these are just the ones you have. Uh, these angular brackets stand in for the greater than or equal signs as you have in mathematics. And there's also greater than or equal to, if you've done a little bit of maths, you know that. So if A is smaller than or equal to B, then, um, so, for example, uh, if b is equal to 2 and a is equal to 2, that'll print true because it's smaller than or equal to. And if it's 1, it's smaller than, so it's still true. And um, there's also obviously greater than or equal to. Um, and yeah, that's, that's basically the, the key ones for now. Um, equals. Ooh. <laughs> so there's uh, equals, does not equal, greater than, smaller than, smaller than or equal to, oops, smaller than or equal to, greater than or equal to. Uh, I'll leave another, uh, uh, there'll be another link to all of this in the description, they'll probably be on the same page. You can go in and just refresh your memory whenever you need it, but that's basically how if statements work. They check if this thing is true, and um, if they, uh, and if it is, it does what's inside it, and if it doesn't, it doesn't do what's inside it. It goes to its next else statement, or it just carries on if there is no else statement. Something else I have realized I've just forgotten is uh, you can do more than one evaluation. If A is greater than or equal to B, or if B is equal to two, print true. What will this do? Well, it prints true. Why does it print true? Because A is not greater than or equal to B. However, or B does equal two, so it will print true. Maybe we want both of these to be true. We can use and. If A is greater than or equal to B, and B is equal to 2, then print this. So this is going to be false. So if I change A to 3, oh well, 4, fine, um, run that, it's going to print true, because this is true, and this is true. And if B is equal to 1, then this is going to evaluate to false. And then we could do L, oop, uh, L if um, A is equal to B, print just something. Yeah, I can't think of anything to type. Yeah, so we can do something like that. Um, so if we do this, it's going to print something because um, a, does, a, a is, a is uh, greater than or equal to b, but it, but b does not equal to 2, but a is equal to b, so print something. Okay, so that's a brief rundown of, um, well, quite a long rundown of if statements and everything about that. Um, 
So now let's write some code to, to have some fun in KSP. I think we've got a bit of a grasp of that, and it'll be far clearer if we just do something with it. So let's clear all of this and uh, get building ourselves a rocket. We'll clear Hello Space from earlier. We'll hit Start Server if you haven't already, because we need the server to be running so that we can run our code directly into it. And we're going to go to space. So we're going to need a rocket first. Let's call this... Um, Phoenix, I've forgotten how to... No, yeah, yeah, that's probably how you spell Phoenix, right? Phoenix 1! All glorious and everything. Let's give it a parachute, because we're going to want to land this today. We didn't land the one yesterday. We Uh, yesterday. Um, in the last episode, we just let it crash. So let's just build ourselves a fairly basic rocket for flying around a little bit. Um, so yeah, grab that. Grab some of that. I If you just build it fairly similarly to me, this is all going to work out fine, but... Uh, yeah, you're going to want it to have the same amount of stages and everything as mine because we're going to be doing something, I guess, specific. You could just build an exact replica of this. In fact, it would probably be quite good if you did because then this will go very smoothly. <laughs> anyway, let's give it some launch clamps as well. Put this on the ground and uh, get it launched. Just a real simple rocket. That's all we're going to do today is just a nice, simple rocket and leave it on the pad. So, what are we going to do today? Well, with all of that knowledge, I think it's about time we controlled a rocket around. So let's do what we did last time. Let's import the KRPC library. That's all the KRPC code we're going to use. We're also going to need a connection. Um, I'm just going to call it con today because it's a little quicker to type. Um, and programmers love to uh, shorten things to make them quicker to type. So we've got our connection to the game. We're going to get ourselves our vessel the same way we did last time. Just going through our connection. Um, you can call your variable names by, by the way, whatever you want, but try to pick logical names so it's easy to read and understand. Um, just in case you're coming back to it or one day someone else is reading your code, as people have to read my code every day, and I'm sure it's terrible. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to go to uh, connection.spacecenter. Now this is basically just the game. This is this is this this variable name is just the game. That's where we get all our stuff, and from there we can get ourselves an active. Ooh, active vessel like that. So that gets us our active vessel, which is of course this vessel. Um, and then what are we going to want to do? Well, we're going to want to make it launch. Now this is a liquid fuel engine, so the first thing we want to do for launch is throttle up. So what we're going to do is get our vessel vessel dot control. This is uh, something within vessel, the same way active vessel is within the space center, which is within the connection. Control is within the vessel. So vessel dot control. Um, contains something called throttle, which is just our throttle value. So we can set this to 1. This is a number variable. So we could also set it to 1.0 or 0.5. But we're just setting this variable to 1, and that'll set our throttle to 1. We're also going to want to turn on our SAS, because that's very important when you launch. So we're going to go to the control again. We're going to say SAS is equal to true. This is a Boolean variable, because SAS can be on or off, true or false. So that's what that is. Um, and then we're going to want to launch the same way we did last time. So vessel dot control dot activate next. S Ooh, <laughs> screwed that up. Next stage with some brackets on the end. Now this isn't a variable. This is a function within a program that we're calling, and this r this runs some code, some code someone else has written within KRPC. And what that does is it activates our next stage. So let's run that right now. Let's just hit F5. And it's just going to run within the game. You're going to see it's throttling up and staging. And uh, that's it. That's what it's done. It's uh, throttled up, locked the SES, as you can see here, and hit the next stage. So that's good. So we our program is stopped um, by itself. But if it some for some reason hadn't, we could hit Control-C, and that would interrupt the program. All right, let's revert back to launch. So that's the basics. Now we're going to want to control it. So what we're going to need... <clears throat> is something called a while loop. Now, I'm not covering this in a lot of depth today. I'm going to cover loops properly next time, but to do things, we're going to need a while loop. And now, what a loop is, is it is just something that loops. It does, the, it does what is within it as many times as you tell it to. So what we're going to do is type while true, and then there's some, we're going to write some code in here. We're going to write some code down there. And you'll notice this is a lot like an if statement. Instead of writing if, though, we write while. And then there's a condition. So we could also write while 1 is equal to 1. But for now, we're just going to give it the value true. So it's always going to be true. Um, so what that's going to do is we're going to write some code in here. And that's just going to keep repeating the code. So our, old, our other programs we wrote would just run and then end. But this isn't going to end until we tell it to end by hitting Control-C in here. 
So, that's just fairly simple. I'm going to explain loops in far more detail next episode, but we do need this for today. So what we're going to want for controlling our vessel is something we want to know what it's doing. And all we're going to care about today is its altitude. So what we're going to do is create a variable called altitude within this if statement. And uh, this while sta this while loop, sorry. And altitude is going to be equal to vessel dot flight. That's a function which returns you basically what the telemetry of the vessel, the telemetry of the vessel. And then we're going to get a variable called mean altitude. This is the mean altitude of the vehicle above sea level. And let's just print that so we can get an idea of what that is. Print altitude. Now, what I, I guess I didn't explicitly say, but what is true is um, within an if statement, you can write as much, or within an if statement or a while loop for that matter, you can write as much code as you want. What we could have done is said if true, for example, um, print something, blah, blah, blah. Uh, A is equal to one, uh, B is equal to two, A is equal to, uh, A is e plus equals B, print B. And all of that would happen if true, basically. So yeah, I didn't quite explicitly say that, but that is what you can do. You can write as much code within that as we as you want. And that's what we're gonna do with this while loop. So anyway, let's just run that. We're gonna run this piece of code. We're gonna put this over here so we can see it. <coughs> And you can see we've got a pretty accurate representation of our altitude just being printed to our terminal. So you can see we know what's happening now. We know what altitude we're at. So let's uh, stop this program by hitting Control C, and that's going to stop it. Um, and then we're going to, again, revert to launch and put this back here. Um, all right, so now we know our altitude, we can do some things. Let's say once we get to a, uh, a kilometer up, we want to start turning east. So what we're going to want to do is say if altitude is greater than a thousand, we're going to want our vessel, our vessel's control dot yaw to equal one. We're going to, going to want to yaw fully to the right. If we said minus one, it would yaw to the left. If we said 0.5, it'll yaw half. But one is full yaw to the left. But then we don't want to yaw the whole way up. We want to turn over a bit and then stop. So let's say L if altitude is greater than 1500. Oh, I've spelled L if wrong. Nice. <laughs> Make sure you spell it wrong. No, L if altitude is greater than 1500, vessel oop, dot control dot your is equal to 0 0.5. But that doesn't really make sense because something can both be, uh, its altitude can both be over a thousand and over 1500. So once it's over 1500, it's gonna try and do both of these. Okay, well let's say if altitude is greater than 1000 and altitude, oop, al altitude is smaller than 1500. So while we're between an altitude of 1000 and 1500, we're gonna turn fully. And once we're over 1500, we're gonna turn half. So let's run that now, see what happens. So if you got that right, oh, I haven't. I've missed myself a colon. I will do that a lot because I don't write a lot of Python in my day job. But anyway, so we put the colons on there and then we hit F5 to run it and it runs. So let's watch that altitude and make sure it turns over once it gets to a thousand. That's 900 and a thousand and it turns nice. And then it gets to 1500 and turns a little less. Very nice. Okay, so let's stop our pro program by hitting control C or whatever it is in the editor you're using. But if you're using Python, just hit Control C while here. Oh, I reverted to vehicle assembly. I meant to revert to launch. Anyway, so that's all well and good. So that turns now, but then we're gonna want at some point for it to stop turning entirely. So let's say at 2000, it's gonna stop turning. So else vessel.control.yaw is equal to zero. But obviously we're going to need to do that after 2000. So let's say, um, else if altitude is greater than 1500 and altitude is smaller than 2000, turn that much. And then once it's above that, it'll set its control dot yaw to zero. All right. And then at some point we're going to want to stop. We're going to want to come back. So let's say we get to 5,000 meters. We're going to want to turn off the rocket and come home. Okay. All right. If um, altitude is greater than 5,000 meters. Uh, vessel, oop. 
vessel dot control dot uh, throttle like we did earlier to throttle it up we're gonna set it to zero and that'll turn off the rocket and then we're gonna want a stage because look uh, we've got a separator here and then a parachute so let's say um, just after that um, if altitude ooh, altitude is greater than 5200 meters we're gonna say vessel dot control ooh, dot stage uh, no, not dot stage, dot activate next stage, like so. And you know what? We're probably going to want to turn off um, our SAS because we're going to want it to follow the airstream down. You know when you're coming back into the atmosphere, it's naturally stable. We're going to want to do that. So we're going to want to say vessel dot control dot, ooh, uh, <laughs> good spelling, dot SAS, oh my god, what is wrong with me, dot SAS is equal to false. Like so. And then you have to capitalize the F in Python when you're writing booleans. Okay, so that's looking good. So that's going to fall back to Earth, but we're going to want to pull our parachute at some point. Oh, well, that's easy enough. Let's say if, after this, uh, if altitude is uh, smaller than 2000, uh, vessel dot control uh, dot control dot activate next stage. It's just, we just want to hit the next stage again, pull that parachute. So let's do that. And let's run that code. But oh wait, it's it's pulling all of its stages at once. Well yeah, because the altitude is below 2,000 meters. Of course. Alright, okay, well let's stop this program running. It's defective. We found a bug in our code. Um, <laughs> anyway. <coughs> so let's revert that to launch and figure out a fix for this. So we only want to do this once we've already gone above 5,000 meters, once we're coming back down. All right, well, maybe we have two settings for this program. We have a Boolean saying, is landing. Let's call this, a, uh, give ourselves a variable called is landing and set that to false for, for now. Now we've put this outside the while statement so that this doesn't get reset every time. If we were to put this in here, it would always be false. But if somewhere in here we set it to true, it's always gonna be true for every loop of the while loop. There's also something called scope in uh, in programming. So, for instance, I've set this variable outside of um, the while loop, and uh, I can use it inside the while loop and outside the while loop, but I've set this variable altitude within the while loop, and I can't use this outside the while loop because it only exists within the while loop. And if I were to set something inside one of these if statements, I couldn't use it anywhere else in this while loop because it only exists within that... Uh, within, uh, within that... Uh, if statement. So basically, it's like a hierarchy. Um, if you set something at the top, you can use it all the way down. If you set something at the bottom, you can only use it at the bottom. If you set something in the middle, you can use it below it, basically. So that'll become clearer later, but that is something to bear in mind, uh, which I maybe should have uh, covered earlier. But uh, yeah, that's something. So yeah, if I were to say a is equal to five, I could print a here for example, but I couldn't print A down here. Let's just run this uh, just to demonstrate this. So I think this is quite important. So um, so let's just run that. And oh no, we've got an error. A is not defined, and that's on line 27. Um, so line 27 is right here, as you can see, line 27. This A isn't defined because it's inside this if statement. But if I were to put this uh, if statement, but if I were to say A here, and uh, rerun this program. Let's revert to launch and rerun this program. Um, let's give it a second. Run it. Then it's going to have no problem. It's going to print A a bunch of times. It's going to print it loads of times because it can print it everywhere. And the same would be true if I put A here. I could print it inside all of this because um, it's above everything else, if that makes sense. Anyway, I thought that should that's quite important, so I'll cover that. Sorry if that was a bit random, but uh, it is very important. Anyway, let's get rid of all of that and focus on this very useful variable, is landing. So, <coughs> this, happen, this little thing down here happens in landing. So, let's say if, let's say all of this happens if not is landing. Maybe I should just call it landing, so it'll be more like if not landing. So if landing is equal to false, do all of this. All of this is within this if statement. Else, so if it's true, 
do this. I'm just gonna have to move that forward. I'm just hitting tab, by the way, that moves that forward to four spaces or like that. Um, and that's where it should be to be uh, used within this else statement. If it were just a space like this, then that's, um, that's not within that else statement and you'll get an error trying to run this. So you're gonna wanna do that. So what, what's this program gonna do? All right, so it's gonna do all of this launch stuff and then, then it's gonna run this loop. It's gonna find the altitude of the vessel every time. Um, and that's why that's inside the while loop, by the way, because we're going to want to find this every time. If I put it outside the while loop, it would just happen at the start, and we'd always think our uh, altitude were 81, which isn't right. Um, anyway, then if we're not landing, which we're not at the start, and the altitude is greater than 1,000, we're going to yaw to, um, yaw to, well, yaw fully to the right. If it's greater than 1,500 but less than 2,000, we're going to yaw slightly to, uh, we're going to yaw slightly less to the right. And then if it's above 2,000, we're not going to yaw at all. And then once the we're at an altitude greater than 5,000, we're going to turn off our throttle. And then once we're at an altitude greater than 5,200 meters, we're going to activate our next stage to separate our rocket. And then we're going to turn the SAS off. And then, then oh, and then we're going to want to set landing to true, because now we're in our landing sequence, or everything has been setting set up for us to land. So now we're in a landing sequence. This is gonna be, uh, this, this statement is gonna be false because landing is true. So landing does not equal true. Uh, landing does not equal false even once this is true. And then when we come back around, the else is gonna be triggered and we're gonna just basically check every time, is our altitude smaller than 2000? And when it is, when we've fallen below 2000, we're gonna hit the next stage again and that's gonna pull our parachute. So let's run that right now. Okay, it launches. So that's all going well. And we're just gonna wait till we get over a thousand meters and see if it turns. And there we go, it turns just like it should because we're not landing, but we are above a uh, thousand meters. And now we're above 1500 meters. We're turning a little less. Now we're above two kilometers. It's turning even less. It's not turning at all. It's just flying straight. The next landmark will be 5,000 meters. Um, we're just gonna see at 5,000 meters, the throttle should turn off. It did, and then we separate at 5,200 meters. We fall behind, and uh, now we're on a descent mode. We're in landing mode. All right, so we're gonna time warp a little bit. You can time warp while your code's running. That's fine. It might act weirdly if you have lots of things happening, but for now it's okay. And then we're gonna get below 2,000 uh, meters and see if our parachute is pulled. So let's slow down time and see if that works. 2,000 meters. Our stage is activated, our parachute is pulled, and we are all good. Now we should land absolutely perfectly, um, because parachutes work like that. And then you can stop your program by going into the uh, going into the um, shell and hitting Control C, and that'll stop your program. And there we go. That is a quick little program that flies your rocket around a bit and then uh, separates and lands it with a parachute. And that's all we're learning today. I hope everything was clear. If anything isn't, feel free to go back and watch it or look up extra bits online. As I said, I'll rink, uh, rink, uh, link things in the description like a list of operators and variable types and just anything I think might be helpful for you to read through if you really want to. Um, play around with this a little bit in probably, hopefully, less than a week, uh, depending on my schedule. Uh, the next episode will be coming out and we'll be doing a lot more with loops and I think uh, things like scope will become far more uh, obvious where, you know, like where I was placing the variables in if statements and whiles and seeing where they worked and where they didn't. But yeah, I've thrown quite a lot at you today because it's not actually a particularly easy thing to just fly a rocket around. So I've had to kind of put a lot into this episode and it has been a little longer than I thought it would be. It's actually like almost at 40 minutes now. So uh, yeah, I am going to call it there. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I hope things, uh, I hope it is clear. If you have any suggestions for me uh, about commentary style or if I'm just not being clear enough, because to me, this is all stuff I do every day. So I might just be skipping over things I don't think are important. But if there's anything you don't understand, just just leave it in the comments, and uh, yeah. And my code will be linked in the description. If you just can't get yours working, you can download my code and craft and uh, run it like that. But anyway, this has been episode two of Learn to Code with Kerbal Space Program. I will see you next time.